More often than not, military aircraft have notoriously short lifespans, and fighters face a particular problem as they must compete directly with the newest available models. Only a handful of fighters around the globe have been able to stand the test of time, and one of them is the MiG-21. With NATO call sign Fishbed, and known as the Blue Bandit by many American pilots who faced it in combat, the MiG-21 supersonic jet fighter and interceptor aircraft ranks as one of the most widely produced and exported fighters in history. An aircraft fast enough to catch up with even the most skilled American pilots and armed with missiles instead of guns, the MiG-21 was highly feared during Operation Rolling Thunder in Vietnam. Still, despite its power, impact, and sheer production numbers, the Soviet-made design fell victim to what many consider one of the most impressive ruses in military warfare. Keeping up. Initial suitability studies for a new MiG fighter began in 1953, as the resounding success of the MiG-15 and MiG-17 led the Mikoyan Guryevich Design Bureau to believe that Soviet creations could go toe-to-toe -to -toe against their Western counterparts. While the state-owned company already had the MiG-19 as the nation's first supersonic fighter, technology had changed so quickly in the early years of the jet age that the aircraft that once dominated the Korean War's airspace had become obsolete by the mid-1950s. As such, the Soviets intended the MiG-21 to improve upon its predecessor's failures while providing an effective air superiority option for the latest Cold War conflicts. The result was the first successful Soviet aircraft combining fighter and interceptor characteristics in a single plane, the MiG-21, eventually dubbed Fishbed by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. A lightweight fighter, the model achieved Mach 2 speed with a relatively low-powered afterburning turbojet. And in terms of design and innovation, the MiG-21 was mostly a continuation of the already existing MiG models, with the main difference being its triangular delta wings. Fishbed Out of many technological improvements, the MiG-21 had a much larger capacity for armament, and when China gave the Soviet Union an American AIM-9 Sidewinder missile in their fight against Taiwan, the Russians had a great idea. The weapon was then reverse-engineered in Russia and emerged as the K-13, an infrared homing short-range air-to-air missile. The copycat device entered service with the Soviet Air Force in 1960 and became standard with the MiG-21 and many other Russian aircraft. Other armament options include several guided air-to-air -air missiles and unguided bombs or rockets, carrying up to 48,500 pounds of ordnance for a single mission. Moreover, the type was also faster and more maneuverable than its predecessors. Production began three years after a successful maiden flight in 1956, and the MiG-21 entered operational service soon after. While American fighters are usually larger and with plenty of features to carry out different sorts of missions, Soviet ones like the MiG-21 are relatively small and built with traditional materials and simple manufacturing. As such, the tough, simple, and reliable model could be built faster, cheaper, and in larger quantities, and also could be maintained by straightforward and almost unskilled labor. All in all, the MiG-21 holds the record for the most produced jet aircraft in history, with more than 10,645 units built between 1959 and 1985, and operated by over 50 countries. Finding its call As was common with Soviet fighters, the MiG-21 pilots preferred to operate the type from ground control, eliminating the need for bulky, heavy, and sophisticated radar equipment. Designed for short, ground-controlled interception missions, the MiG-21 became renowned for this specific type of mission over the skies of North Vietnam. The first batch of MiG-21s arrived from the Soviet Union by ship in April of 1966, and it was given to the Vietnam People's Air Force's oldest fighter unit, the 921st Fighter Regiment. Capable of reaching a maximum speed of 1,386 miles per hour, but with a short range of 720 miles, the pencil-thin MiG-21s could 
cut through bomber packages before United States fighters could visually identify and target them, all while being able to evade older air-to-air -air missiles. Guerrilla Air Tactics On July 7, 1966, only three months into their operational service in Vietnam, pilot Win Nhat Chu and wingman Tran Nok Su intercepted several F-105 Thunder Chief supersonic fighter bombers while on duty over the Fukien Air Base. The duo then shot down one of the American aircraft with the help of Tran's S-5 rocket weapon. While the Vietnamese could not establish a lock on another Thunder Chief, it became the first time a Vietnam People's Air Force's MiG-21 shot down an enemy aircraft during the conflict. The MiG-21s often attacked American formations from several directions and angles, forcing the Thunder Chiefs to prematurely drop their bombs. After downing a few aircraft, the MiGs did not wait for retaliation, but quickly disengaged and flew back to base. These air warfare guerrilla techniques proved successful for the Communists, and by December of 1966, the MiG-21 pilots of the 921st Fighter Regiment had managed to down 14 F-105 Thunder Chiefs without a single loss. While the U.S. Air Force and Navy had high expectations for the F-4 Phantom, an all-weather long-range supersonic jet interceptor and fighter bomber, such models began to suffer heavy losses when confronted with the lighter MiG-21s. In less than a year, from May to December of 1966, the American Air Force had lost 47 aircraft while destroying only 12 North Vietnamese fighters, prompting a necessary aerial sweep of the Soviet-made aircraft. Operation Bolo In almost two years of airstrikes against the North Vietnamese Air Force's Soviet-made MiG aircraft, American flyers had scored less than 30 aerial downings. Still, the rules of engagement forbade American pilots from attacking Hanoi's airfields to prevent an accidental attack on foreign advisors. The 7th Air Force was fed up with this dynamic and proposed a unique and elaborate ambush to strike down Hanoi's feared fighter jets. To complete this challenging endeavor, the 7th Air Force chose Robin Olds to lead the American strike force. Olds was a famous colonel in charge of a tactical fighter wing in Thailand at the time. Originally known as the Special Mission, the plan for Operation Bolo was to lure the MiG-21s into an encounter with F-4s. Still, there was a secret element of the plan that wasn't disclosed until after the Cold War ended. Signal snooping C-130B-2 aircraft were also deployed to keep track of the MiG's communications in order to feed information directly to the American pilots throughout the mission. According to Olds, he wanted the task force to be alerted if things weren't working out so they could turn around and head back to their base if needed. Taking down the MiG-21s On January 2, 1967, the U.S. Air Force launched its attack against the MiG-21s, led by the legendary Triple Ace pilot, tricking the North Vietnamese commanders into a disastrous engagement. During the operation, F-4 Phantom II multi-role fighters flew along flight paths typically used by the Hanoi bombers during the lengthy Rolling Thunder aerial bombardment campaign. This ruse drew an attack by Vietnamese MiG-21 interceptors, whose pilots expected to fight against heavy-set F-105 bombers. Instead, Hanoi's pilots were caught entirely off guard and were met by far more agile F-4s, who immediately began to shoot at them. The operation resulted in seven downed MiG-21s, marking a significant success for the United States. Pentagon estimations calculated that Hanoi possessed between 20 to 25 jet interceptors before the operation, thus eliminating up to 35% of the entire force in only one day. The downings included one aircraft flown by Wynne Van Cook, an infamous pilot who would survive the crash and go on to accumulate nine more hits during the remainder of the war. Operation Bolo and a series of aerial ambushes prompted the Vietnam People's Air Force to ground their MiG-21s and reevaluate the tactics and deployment of the model. Later Days While approximately 60 countries across four continents have flown the MiG-21, an accurate number is difficult to determine, 
as several nations ceased to exist before the MiGs that served them. Past operators include Afghanistan, Iraq, several European nations such as Germany and Finland, and former Soviet territories like Georgia, Slovakia, and Yugoslavia. Still, the number of operational MiG-21 fighters began to decline in the late 1980s as more modern models began to replace them in service and the Soviet Union collapsed, leading to a dramatic reduction of Russian air power strength. However, the MiG-21 and its Chinese variant still serve many nations and are currently used in 18 air forces worldwide, including Russia, Ukraine, and India. With dozens of variants and upgrades over the years, the modern-day fish beds are much different from the fighters that were first introduced in the mid-20th century. These newer models carry more sophisticated weapons and many electronic upgrades for their radar and communication equipment. In addition, with the advent of 3D printing, it has become even easier for current operators to keep their models in service, producing spares and upgrades within each country without much Russian intervention. Indian MiG-21s, the main operational force of the type, have been updated to serve at least until 2025. If this happens, the MiG-21 will become the most extraordinary success story of the Soviet Air Force. Ultimately, the MiG-21 remains one of the most iconic fighters of the supersonic age, more than 60 years after rolling off the lines for the first time. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. Don't hesitate to hit the like button if you enjoyed our video, and feel free to share it with someone who might like it. Also, for more incredible military and historical content, subscribe to this and all the Dark Documentaries channels, and stay tuned for more.